Hello, my dear brothers and sisters. I stand in front of you today, not just as a member of society, but as an individual with a mission to help the society using science and technology. My story begins in a rural village called Shahada in India. It's a beautiful place. It has a nice hills, tall hills on one end, a river flowing through, plenty of fields, farms, and wonderful people. This happiness has a price to pay. The hills would block the wind that brings rain clouds to the region of Shahada. And when there is less rain clouds, that means less rain. Less rain over a period of time dries up the rivers, dries up the farmland, and we were hit with drought. It was a very difficult time. The local government helped us by tapping underground water reservoir and providing us with using tank water tankers, usually about 5,000 liters a tanker, and uh, for a family of 10. I, I remember at that time, everybody in the neighborhood would stop whatever they're doing. Men, women, kids, they would find every single container that they can find in the house, including cups, and try to fill them up with water and fight for that uh, in front of that tanker. The, I saw that the rich in the society, they were able to tap the same underground water reservoir and fill it up on their, and in private reservoirs. That's fine. But when they would start filling up the water tank, it would overflow, and all that water would go waste. How is that fair? On one hand, you have people who are fighting for a basic commodity of water, and on the other hand, there are people who are wasting it. I was 15 at the time around, and I, w I just learned about this wonderful device called a transistor. And I said to myself, hey, how about if I de create some device using this transistor, and maybe I can help solve this problem. And I created a device that needed just three wires that can be dipped into the water reservoir, and when the water tank would fill up, it would sound an alarm. And this alarm can be used to turn off the water reservoir, uh, they are filling up the water reservoir. I was able to present this to at multiple science competitions, won first prizes, and that's when I realized that helping society using education in science and technology is my dharma. But is technology engineering uh, enough? No. We need basic sciences, we need physics, we need mathematics. When I was in graduate school, I was given this problem by my advisor and his colleague. In spinal surgeries, the surgeons might accidentally touch a nerve. And if that happens, that can cause a permanent damage to the patient and may lead to severe disabilities. Are there any devices that keep track of this? Yes, there are. But these devices need 10 to 20 minutes to see what is going wrong. But the surgeries last for six hours, eight hours, 10 hours. So it doesn't really help that often. Sometimes, most of the times, in fact, patients come back after 40 years after the surgery and say, hey, doc, what did you do? Now I can't even talk and I can't even walk. So I, I, when I was given this challenge, I was able to come up with a, an algorithm to track the same surgical procedure every three seconds using uh, engineering, mathematics, a little bit of neuroscience. And it worked. After I graduated, I was presented with many options. But one stood out among all of them. This problem came to me from a fellow alumnus of FIU. He said, Krishna, I'm facing this problem, and I know it will resonate with you like it did with me. His parents are 85 plus, and he wanted to help them. It's not always possible when you have your own family and your parents live far away from you. So he tried to look into the market and see what is available. How can he help? 
to solve that problem. He found something called as ambient monitoring systems and something called as wearable devices. These wearable devices, all they can do is track how fast you walk, how many steps you took in a day, but how good is that information? How much does that tell you about a person's disabilities or health? The other thing called as ambient monitoring, they literally put cameras in your house and monitor you. And we know how much we hate cameras in our houses. So we came up with this idea of creating a wearable, but instead of just tracking how many steps they took, how about we say how often they eat, how often they brush their teeth, how often they shower? That I can use. How? So we created this wearable device. It looks like a jewelry. And this device is simple enough to be worn on the dominant arm. And when you walk around or when you eat, when you brush your teeth, it tracks these motions. It understands. And it is artificial intelligence behind it. And this machine learning algorithm will learn how often you brush your teeth, how often, at what time you eat, how often you like to cook. Now, if somebody likes to cook every day, but for two days they stop cooking, is something wrong? Why did they forget? Why did they not cook? Don't they feel happy? Something that I need to know so I can intervene and provide a just-in-time care. So my friends, if you look to your left and to your right when you're in the society, there are many problems. But if we use our skills in science, technology, combine a little with passion, art, I know we can solve this. Thank you.